Welcome to a super interesting, somewhat longer video about a tremendously important topic. We are going to talk about the connection between sleep and pain. To be more precise, about our sleeping positions. As you can probably imagine, we sleep about a third of our lives, sleeping it away, to tell the truth. And if this long period of time, this activity that is such a major part of your life, is not connected with the way you feel, that would be kind of strange. In this video, I'm going to explain connections that have never been explained to you before. I don't know why. I, at least, have never heard about them before. And if you think about it, it's really only logical. I'm going to show you in detail which sleeping position can have a negative impact on you and cause pain and how to sleep much better and at the same time live pain-free. Let's first clear up the question, where does pain come from? If you've been following my videos a bit, you probably already know it's about movement, restriction to movements, angles of motion we assume and do not compensate for with other angles. All this increases the tension in the muscles and fascia, contracts the joints, triggers alarm pain that is sent from your brain to protect the structure. You may know by now that pain does not originate from arthrosis, herniated discs, slip discs. It is about the tension in your muscles and fascia. As to our topic today, it is of course more about fixed positions. We habitually assume and we do not compensate for. Which positions do we assume every day and don't compensate for? Which postures that we take too often comes to mind first? It is, of course, as everybody knows, our sitting position. I'm going to ask our buddy here for help and to better demonstrate the situation. Look, when we sit, it looks like this. This is already the source of a lot of discomfort if you do not compensate for it. Don't get us wrong. We don't say, don't sit. Stand up for writing or something like that. Do what you want to do, but compensate for it. That's our motto. Only when we sleep, a third of our life, we would be better off to compensate while we sleep. But more about that later. Let's look at sitting first. We have our hip flexor. The hip flexor is attached here, runs above this bone and branches off with one strand going into the iliac bone and the other into the lumbar spine. And this muscle, the flexor, bends your hip, pulling up your thigh. It's easy to see here. The leg hangs down, so the point is far below. Here, the point is much higher, and that means the muscle and the fascia and everything that hangs in between here is much shorter than when we're standing up. And if we don't compensate for this and sit too much, some studies say eight to nine hours, up to 11 hours, so about eight hours for sure. So again, if we don't compensate and stand up again, then there will be a pull on our lumbar spine and more of a hollow back will develop. Hyperlordosis, too much of a pull resulting in slip discs and such. And at the same time, your pelvis will be tilting this way. And that again, is the same as an overpronounced hollow back. All of that pushes things into a negative direction. So the results are back pain, hip problems due to too much tension there, and that in the middle of your body alone is already a permanent source of all evil, yeah? of all the pain. But that, unfortunately, is not the end of the story. Let's have a second look at the knee joints. Most of the time we sit, they're bent at a 90-degree angle, give or take. Now we have this thick calf muscle that runs from down here to the Achilles tendon. Here you have the muscle, and it runs up to the back to the condyle. That's the name for this outward-turning bone. When we sit, it is noticeably shorter than when we stand. What does that mean? Sitting shortens the calf muscle, resulting in pain there. That causes those cramps in your calves at night. And here, on the Achilles tendon, it creates too much tension, and so it becomes irritated, inflamed, permanently injured. Your typical Achilles problems, torn tendons, all those bad things. And at the same time, 
And because the calf muscle runs above the knee joint, this muscle, on account of being too short, pulls the upper thigh towards the calf, and what lies in between those two? The meniscus and the knee joint with its cartilage lining. And that leads to arthrosis and, as I said before, to pain around the knee joint. And further down, this shortened calf muscle leads, or might lead, to problems in your foot joint, arthrosis, all those unpleasant issues. Let's look at the upper body. Here we have our arms. What do we typically do with our arms in our daily lives? Whether we're writing, giving somebody a massage, washing the dishes, sewing, typing on a keyboard. Where do we have our arms and our hands in front of our upper body? At about this angle, no matter what we do, they are normally here. With the exceptions of activities where you have to reach behind. But who does that, really? So, what happens if your arms are always in front of your body at these angles? Here we have the big chest muscle. If your arms are always like this, your arm flexor, just like your hip flexor, becomes shorter and shorter and more and more inflexible. All this increasing pull forward leads to pain in the thoracic spine. This burning sensation between your shoulder blades, a pain that simply comes from too much strain, because everything in the front is too short, the pull goes forward, and that overstrains your back, your thoracic spine, and the burning starts. These things are connected. At the same time, a combination of things occurs. First, the damage from sitting. It is responsible for an overpronounced hollow back because the spine is pulled inward. Remember the slip discs we talked about. And that tells you about how much force is active inside your body working against its own components. The moment everything is pulled inward and the pelvis starts to tilt, there is the tendency in the area of the thoracic spine to compensate for this by rounding the back. And now, the position of the arms in front also adds to the tension. It not only goes like this, but also like this, because the arms always rotate inward. Nobody writes like this, rotating outwards. You always rotate inwards, not outwards. So we have a hollow back, a round back, and we also have this posture. And if your neck were straight now, where would you look having a rounded back? You would look downward, but you want to look straight ahead, into the camera, so to speak. So what do I do? I hold my head like this, and what I'm showing you is a typical posture of the elderly. With age, people shrink, bent over more, and at a certain point, they need a walker, shuffling along in small steps, and that's a sad thing to see. We have to educate people about this so it won't happen again or less often. Walking like this in the street and everybody goes, well, those people are old, that's the way it is, it's their age. This is so not true. Don't believe it. That's the result of 20 or 30 years of incorrect habits manifested in the positions I just explained that have not been compensated for. So, we talked about how sitting and what we do with our arms when we sit or even when we stand is the source of almost all the pain that you get. I could go on with pain in the elbows, the wrist. Everything is connected to this. But let's not go overboard here. I just want to explain the overall situation in our body. So that means we have pain all over thanks to this position with our arms in the front Let's take away our buddy here. Thank you for the help. And turn to our typical sleeping position. What you see here, and you will agree, I guess, is uh, the most common sleeping position. The first question that might pop up could be, why do most people sleep like this? Because they're used to it. And why did they get used to it in the first place? Through their sitting habits. Exactly what we explained a minute ago. 
And if these shortened muscles and increased tensions that happen when you sit with your arms in the front, if this posture becomes second nature to your body, your body feels well in this position, at least if it's not under load, in your sleep, that is. Because initially, your back and your shoulders are pain-free in this position. Only later, after things have deteriorated, you have pain in your sleep even. But that's a level that's still far away. Should you be one of those who have reached this level, it's high time to follow and apply what I'm telling you here in this video. This means we sleep like this because this is the position our body got used to. Let's have a closer look at this. We have this angle in the hip joint. This position is still rather unproblematic. I know patients that assume an embryo position with their knees pulled up. Doesn't work here, it's jammed, but you know what I mean. I'll try with one leg and you could see this excessive angle. There are people who switch sides in their sleep with their knees pulled up almost to the chests because the muscles here in this area are too short. Your body pulls up the legs into a position where there's no strain, where there's no tension. So you pamper your shortened muscles. Anyone that sleeps like this, I mean. So now the knees, they are sometimes bent more than 90 degrees. Remember, it's 90 degrees when we sit. That too is more worse than better. Then in this side position, what happens to our arms? You know how it is when you sleep. You have one arm tucked in, sometimes even resting your head on it, bringing the arms even closer to your chest, as if we don't have enough of that during our work day. So, these positions are even worse. And now, and this is just simple biomath, if you will. So let's add up one and one. We sit eight to 10 hours a day, if that's enough. Some, I'm sure, sit even longer. Then we lie down a third of our lives. That's eight hours per day. Let's knock off the time we might lie down in a different position. But for seven hours, we lie like this. And all of that adds up. Now, you could say, okay, Roland, you always tell us we can do what we want to do, but make sure to compensate for it. And here I have to say, we're approaching a limit. I mean, it's almost a miracle that thanks to the 27 stretching exercises that I have developed, that we can compensate for so much of what happens during the day. But you can imagine, if you also sleep in such an extreme position, at a certain point you are way past the 15-minute exercise mark, and it becomes increasingly difficult, even if you're very efficient, to compensate for all of that. We would have to do even more exercises every day. So it's a lot smarter thinking, okay, if I understood the principle correctly, the better approach would be to apply this knowledge, take my sleeping position, and retrain it. The operational word here is retrain, because you are going to have, for at least two to three weeks, some tough nights. Yes, you're going to sleep, but you'll wake up sore all over and so on, because your body is in the process of retraining. How can we assume a different position to retrain our body? Now, a simple idea enters the picture. If during the day we sit or stand, gravity works on us. What does gravity do? It wants to push us down, making us smaller, because this is the direction gravity works in. If you now have all these shortened muscles, plus scoliosis, hyperlordosis, your body will give in more and more to gravity. And if the mechanism is bad, the muscle's too weak to hold and stabilize everything so you could stand upright, then you become smaller. Older people realize that when they check their passport where it says 5 feet 12, they're actually now only 5'11". Why? Because these curvatures have become more and more pronounced over time. What's the smart, physiologically smart thing to do to use sleep for straightening everything up again? I simply lie on my back. Now, don't be shocked and say, oh, no, no, not my back. I, I can't sleep on my back. There have been so many examples over the past 30 years. It takes some time to get used to, but eventually you will enjoy lying on your back. 
Please read the comments section of our sleep videos and you'll find many people who say, the first couple of nights it was new and I had a lot of discomfort, but now I couldn't do without it. And now, please follow this one idea, follow the logic. If, during the day and through gravity, we develop a more and more pronounced curvature, what can be better for eight hours, a third of my life, that is, and on top of some restful sleep, then straightening out my body. That means I lie down like this. Let's look at the situation from the feet to the head. So there's a trick you could use to loosen up your calves. Use your blanket. Put your feet on it. Pull the blanket over your feet so that they are tucked in. And then tug on it to bring your feet up like this. It's a small thing, but still. Then... Your knees will be straight, and that means your shortened calf muscles will be elongated. Let's move to the hip flexor. Should you be one of those people who can lie on their back only like this, because otherwise it would strain your back, think about biomath again. Add up one and one. If your hip flexor is too short, and it is in most people these days, and these people want to stretch their legs. They probably reach the limit of their hip flexor, which does not yield anymore, causing pain in the lumbar spine. And we start to feel a bit of a strain, which is logical, because if the structure is not long enough, the hip flexor is not flexible enough, then this is going to happen. Here, I recommend the following. Slide a towel underneath to prop up your knees, but not as a permanent solution, never. You would just pamper your body and its shortened muscles, and you would bypass using sleep as a positive exercise. So the towel roll should become smaller every day. Smaller, 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 and at a certain point, the hip flexor will be flexible enough and can yield. Now, everything is easy on your knees, your hips, and also your ankle joints, and that means the pain in your hips your knees will subside. If it's enough to make the pain disappear for good, depends on the individual situation. I often hear that this would do the trick, but even if not, you are working towards the goal of getting rid of the pain. So let's move on. Your arms are not in front anymore, but are stretched out alongside your body. Gravity will pull everything that is up, suspended, so to speak, down. So when you're on your back, and you're lying there nice and relaxed, and you could never relax as much as when you're sleeping. And it's important to understand the following. When you lay your body down on level ground like this, the sections of your spine that are elevated tend to sag down. And wherever your body rests now, it rests here, and here where your head is, your spine will be straightened out. And that brings us to a very important topic and a very contentious issue where a lot of people are of a different opinion. I'll speak about my opinion because I'm convinced of it. And the question is, on what kind of surface do we sleep best? A hard surface or a soft surface? The most extreme example is the waterbed. A friend of mine owns a waterbed, and he's always telling me, Roland, it's just great, it's so comfortable, and in the morning I wake up in the same position as when I fell asleep. I didn't move a bit, it was so comfortable. Oh boy, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Because is this the way it's supposed to be? Should you not move an inch for eight hours? Please don't, because movement is extremely important. We know that, as a healthy person, you turn about 20, 30, 40 times in your sleep. You won't wake up, you just change your position. And that is super important for your metabolism, for all those areas that used to be pressed on before, so that they get relieved now. Your body always needs a reason to move around. Similar situation, sitting on a chair, maybe for 10 hours sometimes, versus sitting on the floor where I usually move around a lot. This is why sitting on the floor on a nice fluffy rug is much better than sitting on a chair or a cozy couch. 
It's poison for our body if we don't approach this situation intellectually, knowing it is not good for us. So, I'm speaking in favor of a harder mattress. The harder, the better. Real hard with a thin blanket which is still thick enough to cushion your bones. That, in my book, is the optimum. And maybe you feel the same way. The softer the surface is and gives in, the more you pamper your body with its shortened muscles. Yes, you might feel good, but in the long run, it is a disservice, leading to a dead end of ever more shortened muscles. And it is only on a really hard surface that all those positive stretching effects, the compensating impact of gravity, can be utilized without spending any more additional time on it. So, you have some options to pick from. Option one, you allow your sleep to give in to your body's shortened muscles and risk even higher tensions, and as a consequence, end up in a painful situation. Or you use the same amount of time to make yourself more fit, flexible, pain-free, relaxed in all those tissues. And another bone of contention I want to clear up in the way that I see it. Pillow? Yes or no. Neck roll? Yes or no. For heaven's sake, no. Think about it. If you stand like this, how can a neck roll help you? at first glance, maybe. Because you play into the shortened muscles of your neck. Same situation with the pillow. Less so, but still bad. The best thing is to lose the pillow. Slowly lose the habit like you did with the towel roll under your knees. Be sensible. Start with a normal pillow. Take a smaller one. Every day a little smaller, thinner. So you always have a change. Understand that your sleep is a way out of this situation of shortened muscles. It helps to free you up, make you more flexible, so you wake up in the morning without back pain or with less pain or no pain at all because you have worked a lot on the problem. The same holds true for your Achilles tendons, your knee pain, pain in your hips, for pain in the thoracic spine, for the pain in your shoulders and your neck. Is this really a choice? To not do it like this? I hope what we have talked about has made sense to you. It would be great if you could share this video as often as you can. Children should get used to sleeping like this right from day one so they won't have to retrain. If you're older, with an already overextended neck, it is important to do exercise to get things somewhat straight again before you could sleep like this. However, if you lie on your back, your body will change positions if it feels uncomfortable. And try a slow approach to this, without any pressure or stress, lie on your back and fall asleep. If you can fall asleep, try for a while, and then turn into your position of habit. Maybe you won't pull your knees up all the way, but a little less. Go to all the places I warned you about and go to the limit of this movement. Find a point where it is not stressful for you to fall asleep. You may wake up and realize, oh, I'm back in the bad position again. But please, no stress. We want to get rid of the tension and stress. Just think, okay, rolling back onto my back. So, back on your back, and you're asleep soon after anyways. Just do this consistently without feeling pressured or stress. That is important. We want to get rid of this. And please, don't be stressed out if your body tells you it doesn't want to go into this back position right now. And since you know all about the drawback of the side position, left or right, then lie on your belly. This position, it's also great because your legs are pulled straight so that the hip flexor can be relaxed and it gets stretched out in your sleep. If it is too difficult for you on your belly, slide a folded towel underneath your belly, but only until you could lie flat on your belly. The belly position is perfect and it has one advantage. You can turn your head either way, left, right, and this way you can also relax the muscles that turn your head. So, go deliberately onto the back 
or belly position. And should you wake up, don't be stressed out. Find your back or belly position again should be easy to handle.